What's going on traders? In this video, I'm just going to be showing you guys uh, how I set up my trading view in order to trade supply and demand. And basically everything you see here, all these drawings and everything, it's all I use. And uh, I'm just going to be showing you guys how I do that, how I set this up, and how I op try to optimize trading view for supply and demand. Because there's a lot of little tricks and tricks and tips that you guys might not know about. So stay tuned and I'll... Uh, see what I can show you guys and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below if you have any suggestions for me please leave them down below I'm always open to uh, new ideas so anyways this is pretty much all the tools I use in one picture right here as you can see I got my trend lines momentum lines I got the yellow highlights the risk to reward tool all that stuff right so we'll just pick a random chart here um, you know what, I'm even going to just go to a completely different uh, chart just so we can get a clean chart. So first of all, I got my three chart layout because supply and demand, you trade three time frames. You do not have to use three chart layouts. You can simply just use, you know, one. That's totally fine. I don't like that. Uh, my trading partner and a lot of the traders I know, most of them actually all use one chart. Uh, I think that's insane. <laughs> I personally need the three chart layout. Um, it just makes everything more clear, right? Because let's just say, let's just pretend this is the man right here, right? Like, you can just quickly see that you, you open up the chart, you're looking at all your things, you open up this chart, you see, oh, price is sitting in daily demand. Maybe because I wouldn't be stuck on the 15 minute, right? It just, it just gives a faster overall view, and I just like it. But you don't have to do that, that's totally fine. But the three chart layout I use is this one where my my daily, my intermediate, and my entry. You can completely change that around. You can flip that around where it's flipped. You can have four. I don't like four. You can have two. But this is where I do that. And just make sure that you have these two clicked so that your crosshair will follow along with it. And then also you want the symbol to be the same. You, you want it to be the same pair. So that's what I do. And then for drawings, I don't like to have my drawings all synced up because what you can do after, let's just say this is demand, it's not. Let's just say that you want that and you want that on the hourly and the four hour. You simply just right click, sync to all charts and it's all there for you. So I don't like to have that setting clicked. Uh, it's just kind of unnecessary, uh, but you can. I'm simply just showing you guys uh, uh, the, the tools that I use and what I what I use uh, recently I switched to the whole white layout too I like it I feel like it's a lot cleaner with the grid lines and everything I'm trying it out uh, I'm not a fan of the dark the dark uh, theme I don't mind it but I'm not a huge fan but anyways yeah so that's my three chart layout um, I have my buy and sell panel up here my watch list over here and on my watch list I like to separate them this is my main watch list with all my currency pairs. Then I have my all my commodities with my metals and uh, sugar, corn, wheat, all that stuff. Um, currency futures here, just I like to have that. Uh, this is just a natural gas one, I've been watching that. Um, futures and investments, this is just in some investments I own. Uh, not really important, but I like to have a separated watch just like I do. Just keeps everything clean and then I use color codes too guys you should be using color codes so basically uh, I'm not going to click off of this but all these colors mean something the blue for me means that price is in daily demand or daily supply the green means that one half one that the one hour has given me confirmation and I'm looking that's why wheat is at the that's why remember that chart I, the chart I showed you earlier it's giving me an opportunity that's why it's green and this gold orange one is what I own and right now I'm in Euro USD. Uh, I'm probably going to get stopped out uh, for a one to one. My stop loss is in the green. I went over that in my weekly review video that I posted uh, the other day. Uh, anyways, so yeah, that's my watch list. And then, you know, the most important thing here, in my opinion, is this toolbar up at the top. You, by adding, you can add stuff to your toolbar just by favoriting it and then it comes over here and then you can organize them you can move these anywhere you want uh, this is just the order that I like uh, the first thing I have is just the crosshair uh, just you know I'm not even gonna explain that it's just 
very important. And then for all my zones, <clears throat> for all my higher time frames, basically for any zone I draw, I use the Fibonacci retracement. Not as the Fibonacci, but make sure if you do use this, you can't, you gotta come over to the right. Like, I don't know if you see this, but if you just go straight up, it kinda, I don't know why it does that. If you go to the right, then the lines appear. And I think I can show you guys my settings for that. You just want this, this, just copy my settings and you'll be able to do this. You can obviously change the colors. I'm not gonna explain this. For some reason, this took me so long to figure out. So if you wanna use the Fibonacci retracement for zones, completely copy this. And as you can see here, the prices show up. You don't have to have that, I like it. You also don't have to have the, the background colored, which is totally fine. Uh, so yeah, copy those settings if you want. And then I use templates. Where is it? Over here. And I have different ones. I have the black with the black background. I have green. I have red. And then I have white, which is for my second screen for the futures. And this is my trading one. I just have it black. And then what I like to do, if you're familiar with Sam's side, is just do that. So I know where I'm I know where the demand is just quickly. So that's how I know I'm taking a trade, right? So let's just say so this is typically what I would do. I'm just gonna do a quick example, right? Let's just say this is all your demand, right? Like do not think that this is demand. I'm just making an example. So I would have my higher time frame with the blacked out, and then I would sync it to this chart over here so that I can clearly see when price is coming down here, oh, this is daily demand. If it's in this black area, this is daily demand. Let's just say price came down, blah, blah, blah. Here, shot up. Well, then I would take my Fibonacci retracement again. I would do that, I would click on my template, and I would click my trade. Yellow box, highlight the demand. There you go, there's the trade. That's what I would do, instead of using a black one, you can, that's why I have green too, because then it kind of separates the two colors, right? I know it's completely unnecessary, guys. I just, I don't know. I like this kind of stuff, so that's what I do. Um, so yeah, and then if you want to know how to make templates, like how I do, that's you need to be using templates. If you're not using templates, uh, I'm not sure what you're doing. So use templates, make them. I'm not going to go over how to make templates here. I made a video on that, so go check that out. Sorry guys, just drinking my coffee. It's early in the morning here in Canada. So yeah, templates, because you can have templates for everything and it's extremely important. Uh, so that's my Fibonacci retracement. That is all my zones. You can also use this, uh, the rectangle thing to draw zones. I don't like that because then it doesn't extend all the way to the right. I would just rather use the Fibonacci retracement. It's easy, it's simple, it's fast. Uh, yeah, so then I'll, I'll just keep going in order here. So then my trend line, very important as well. That's for marking trend, right? Um, and I have templates for that. I just have black. I don't know why this is called weekly. It should just be called red because I was using it for a weekly before. So red or black, that's the trend line. And the trend line is used, you know, for marking your trend, right? Um, extremely important. That's why it's my second tool. Uh, then the rectangle box, which I told you, which, you know, I'll use it also just to like, say if I want to highlight this area, I'll just come in here and just highlight that area. Be like, oh, this is some demand I'm looking out for. And then, like I said, I use it to, um, like this, to put my trade, to wrap it around my trades and all that stuff, right? So, can be useful. I also like to use it as far as like a, like a range. Let's just say prices in a range like this. This isn't really a range, but let's just pretend it is. I like to just mark it out like that, like a range. Uh, yeah, that's a rectangle. I used to use it a lot more. <clears throat> if you're day trading and stuff, you can use that to just mark out your zones like that because it's not going to hold for that long, right? It's day trading, but anyways, that's the rectangle. And this is the ray. I use the ray only for one thing because my first, my top-down analysis routine is... This is the daily, this is my highest time frame. I click on this box, so it opens it up. I go to the weekly, I assess the trend, and then I use the ray, because then it extends all the way to the right, like that. I'm not saying that that's the trend, I'm just doing an example. So that's what I use the ray for, only for one thing. So I'll find the trend in the weekly, and let's just say I'll go back to the daily. Then I will use my trend line to find the trend like that. 
I just use the ray on the weekly because it extends all the way out. It's very fast. Uh, just something I've been trying out. Uh, and then the ellipse. Don't really use it that much. I kind of use the ellipse just for like, uh, see all this compression right here. So I'll just simply just do that, mark it out like that. I have two templates, compression, fresh, and then removed. Remove just means, let's just say all this price, this is all removed now, right? I don't really use that anymore. Fresh, I have a yellow one as well, compression. Uh, not a not a huge tool in my toolbox, and then the horizontal ray. This is definitely just like the classic supply and demand zone, right? I don't mind the horizontal ray. I used to use that only. I don't really use it that much anymore. Uh, I might use it for uh, like traps. Let's just say if I want to find support and resistance, I'll do that. Trap template, and I'll mark that out like that. Other than that, I don't really use that. And then these next three tools the call out the arrow and the text uh, they're all for journaling journaling and you know trades like let's just say I'm not looking at this chart all the time you know you can have your uh, text in here blah 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 right it's good for journaling these are just my three journaling tools I'm not gonna go over there I'm just arrows just for pointing and shit right text uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, it's all for journaling. I'm not gonna go over it. It's, I would have it on here. I like to. This not really doesn't really need to be in my favorites toolbar, but I like to have it on here just so you know it's like cheating. I'm reminding myself to journal all my trades. And then uh, here's another important tool that I use. I don't know if you saw me on this wheat. Um, I have everything. You know, I'll just, I'll just break it down for you. Um. Okay. So let's just set up a trade here. So let's just say you wanted to buy this area. So you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll do it top down. Let's just say, using all my tools, let's just say that this is the demand here. Template, black, sync to all charts. Now it's over here on my entry time frame. Let's just say you wanted to enter here. I am not saying that this is a trade. I am just doing this as an example. Uh, so I'm marking out my whole trade right now. That's the zone I want to trade. Boom. There's my zone. What I will do is I will take this price range tool and I will find where I want to enter. This is kind of a bad example actually because the spread is insane on this pair. I don't trade this pair. So, but I basically I will use this tool to find the spread difference I want and then the stop loss, right? Because then it shows you how many pips it is here. Uh, this is insane. I've never even seen anything this high. Uh, so then I'll use that in order because I'm not just taking, and then I'll use this long position. I'm not just taking the trade like that and putting my stop loss on the line. You want to give it a little bit of breathing room, right? So then I'll use this tool ahead of time just to measure out before and then I'll simply move these lines to there and then I'll move my entry to there and then my take profit, whatever, right? So I'm using these measuring this measuring tool in order to place this long tool to measure so I can get in a little bit before the zone and my stop loss is a little bit under the zone. Oh, sorry guys, I was taking a big sip of coffee there. Uh, so yeah, that measuring tool, extremely important in my toolbox because you don't want to be stopped out right at your distal line and you kind of want to give it a little bit of breathing room, at least the spread before you enter the trade. And then, yeah, so then I'll I have up here, I have my long position, the measuring tool, and then my short position. So if you're going short, same shit. Uh, that's extremely important. And then I use this to enter my trade. So let's just say you wanted to buy there, right? You buy, enter in the entry, the stop loss, and the take profit. And uh, yeah, that's how I enter the trade. Um, you know what? That's basically it, guys. That's pretty much all I use for entering and trading supply and demand. It's pretty much all you really do need to use. I don't really know anything else, any other tricks. If you know any other tricks, please let me know. I'm always open. I'm always into new things. Um, yeah, if you have any questions too, if I'm leaving anything out, I don't think I'm leaving anything out. I'm not really sure. Can't think right now, but I'm pretty sure 
Because if you look at this trade, which I'm looking at, which I did post on uh, our Facebook trading group. So if you're on Facebook, join our trading group. Uh, it's pretty, it's a nice little group. Uh, anyways, so yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, this is like an actual setup I'm looking at. You can see all my tools in here. You can see how I have this daily demand drawn out on black. I synced it to this chart. This is my entry time frame. I'm using my trend line. It's coming down. I found my trade. I used my template. I used the yellow box. I use this for demand removed. As you can see, same thing over here. This is my intermediate time frame. Everything's here. As you can see, uh, I didn't use this price range in order to find this, but this is a different tool. Same thing. See right here, it says four pips, four pips on each side. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if there's anything, any questions, please leave me. let me know in the comments down below. If you want me to go over anything, just let me know. Take care.